Look at this little guy here. I put out a heart. <laughs> and let's look at that. Oh my gosh. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm here in Bangkok. This is my first stop in... What is the name of this place? Bank... It's going to be on the screen. I can't really remember. Bank... Cool crowd. Um, but this is actually a stopover. It's rained when I got here. There's a nursery that I'm, I'm aiming for, but it's across the street. There's a cool little coffee shop here. And there's actually a plant store slash nursery. So I'm going to take you on a quick peek. And later today, I'm meeting my friend Jan, who is local here in Bangkok. She is actually a plant friend that used to go out plant shopping with me in Chatu Chak. So she'll meet me at the other nursery after this. But let's take a quick look at this really, really interesting cafe and plant store concept. So there's a ZZ plant here. It's a cutting and it's rooted in water. Look at that fat little tuber that's got down there. It's gonna expand in size and I think a new growth point is appearing. You can absolutely cut per leaf. You can just pluck it off and put it in water or you can put the whole stem in. <laughs> but it takes a long time. It takes up to nine months to have a, another plant out of this. All right, so here is the entrance. And sorry I butchered the name of the place, but this is Bang Krau Kool. And there's a coffee shop over here to the left. We just had some excellent cappuccino before, but there is a nursery area here uh, and it's open to public. You could just walk in here. There's a variegated fern over here. Look how stunning this is. This is really, really beautiful. Very good for landscaping. A really nice entrance welcome on this one. And then there are a lot of plants here that I, I don't understand, but um, Thailand is the land of Dishkidias. This is the Jerry, I believe. I don't know all the species name, but we're going to be looking at a lot of Dishkidias in this trip. And then there's also a lot of Tillandsias here. This is the uh, Tillandsia. Oh my God, the name is escaping me. The Spanish moss, that's the common name, but uh, there is a Latin name for this. So there's just tons and tons of uh, Dishkidias here. Cordeline, always a pleasure to meet you. They are everywhere. They're such a successful species. Uh, thriving in every tropical region <laughs> but they don't really make good indoor plants they need full sun look at this air plant over here we're also going to see a lot of air plants in uh, Bangkok they are very very well loved here and the prices on these are very very good in Bangkok if you're considering um, importing plants from them this is one that can withstand shipping I actually don't know if this plant store does export or not but it is more like a tourist attraction. Look at all these the cool little spots where you can take photos over here. And then there's this a lot of, yeah, a lot of photo booths, corners here. I guess they're encouraging people to take pictures. Again, more a whole wall of Bishkidias. These are quite expensive in Indonesia. Really nice. This is a euphorbia if I'm not wrong. I can't remember. Really, really nice here. They look so happy. Let's say another photo wall corner here the cool little dracaena there with the orange it goes really really well with orange look at that color contrast some variegated uh, philodendron burlamarks this is a massive one I usually don't see them this big um, a lot of Spanish moss Spanish moss does add a lot of really interesting uh, flowy texture from up above crotons Mealybug's favorite food. I'm still tr struggling with mine. I don't know how to care for it yet. I'm pretty sure it likes bright light and it hates water. Look how beautiful this is though. It's very crinkly. And there's a Dishkidia dragon jade. This is Numula reoides. I think this is probably a hybrid. We're gonna see a lot of these. Actually, I came to this nursery, uh, the one that we're planning to go after this, because they had a lot of these in stock. This is the slowest growing plant ever. They grow like a new leaf every few months. But in Thailand, they grow really fast, I think. Or I'm not sure, I need to talk to someone about it. Because they have a lot of these in stock and they're very, very cheap here. But where I am in Indonesia, they're very expensive. And they love to be grown in this coconut husk. So look at how long this is trailing. This one's grown out of bear, a long bare stem and it's trailing, trailing, trailing. They're actually easy to propagate but they're also easy to kill. <laughs> um, if you have a lot of yellowing leaves suddenly, that's a sign of overwatering. They really, really hate overwatering. And there are a lot of crevices for uh, pests to hide. So this is a difficult one, but I really adore this. I really, really love 
uh, this I think cultivar or species. And there are lots of these around. This actually a bed of air plants here. That's a ball of them here. <laughs> it's a clump that forms a natural ball. It is such a nice day. It's actually our first day filming plant content here in Bangkok. It's a good start, I would say. <laughs> this little pot here <laughs> with that air plant above it. There is a uh, what do you call this? Ponytail palm here. This is actually a small size. It can get huge. If I have a bigger space, I would definitely love to have these around. They are actually very, very underrated. This here, this is a wonderful variegated plant. I'm not really sure what this is. And over here, I think this this looks to me like the Excacheria cochichinensis with a beautiful red underside. I don't know where mine went actually. I had a nice pot of these, but ever since I moved, it may have been smothered by other plants. And <laughs> yeah, I have a problem. I have too many plants now under my care, and that is a problem. But I'm looking forward to have a bigger space, to have a full team to help me care for plants. <laughs> have you ever met a happier Thermophilum Xanadu? Look at them! Actually, there are a few clumps of them I see. This is not just one, but they look so nice from far away. These can withstand a bit of brightness. They can take a little bit of direct sunlight. And I dare say, correct me if I'm wrong, but they can take full sun. How beautiful. They, they're not the fastest grower, grower in my uh, care. Maybe because I'm not giving it enough brightness. Look at this. This is just really pretty. I really love the accents on the leaves. This here, this is really pretty, it caught my eye. I, it's not fuzzy, I, th I thought it would be fuzzy to the touch, but it's not. Look at how it's repelling water. And it looks like the new leaves come out in this beautiful, I don't even know how, what this color is. This is not purple, it's not pink. Really, really interesting. I think it's a shrub or a tree of some sort. Very nice to meet you. And bam, what a nice welcome here. I really love how they incorporated all these beautiful sculptures in this garden. The owner must have been a appreciator of art and plants. Look at these owls here. And that little painting. <laughs> so let's see what's going on back here. There's a lot of air plants back here. Oh my god, that's a lot. It's rows and rows of them. So the Spanish moss is actually a Tillandia usnioides. <laughs> just googled the name. I actually just realized that this plant, this place is a huge growing facility for them. I think there's a lot of these in Thailand because these are often used in weddings and events and things like that. But my god, look at this! Look at all these dishkiria. The nursery they were supposed to go to has a lot of dishkiria as well. So we will see a lot of that hopefully later. Um, but look at all, look at this. My goodness. Oh my goodness. This is very expensive stuff in Indonesia. This is super, <laughs> super rare, super hard to keep alive too. I really hope to be able to talk to like an expert here maybe to figure out how they care for them. But they really, again, they love to be in this coconut husk. And it is actually shielded from the rain. It's, I think this is going to give us a hint that they really hate water. And the Shkidias maybe do like to be a little bit more, for, I see some slow release fertilizer. They may like a little bit more nutrients than your Hoyas and other things because they are, in fact, relatives of the Hoya. Oh my God, it's such a joy to see them. I'm so humbled and so grateful to be at the presence of them here. This is worth the trip to Thailand. This is the Dishkidia Oyanta variegata. And below that, because this is growing the coconut husk, below that this is grown with the uh, Tillandia usnoides. And look at this cool clump of Tillandia just hanging out. This is hanging on a little teeny tiny terracotta pot and a little bit of a, what do you call it, styrofoam. These are so freaking cute, so freaking cute, my goodness. 
And these are just hanging out. These are uh, Talansias as well. Look at that one's trying to flower. Some of them are a little bit red or sun stressed. That one is in full bloom. Let's get a closer look. So this is what typical uh, Tillandsia flowers look like. And feel free to check out my Tillandsia video. I have, I'm gonna link that up above where I share some of the care tips. I did a tour in Bali uh, and how to grow them into a clump. It takes a long time to grow them into a clump like this. But once they flower, they'll start putting out babies off the sides. A lot of Dishkidia jerrys. A lot of these really, really cool balls. These are ready to be displayed in restaurants, in malls and hotels, in your living space. And this is the uh, Tillandsia xerographica. Oh my god, this just keeps catching my eye. This is so... Look at all these growth points. This is what I love about them. They're such slow growers and they're so hard to keep alive that when you see this, it makes you happy. And I'm loving this Thai music that's in the background. There's a clump of air plants here. I'm sorry if I'm moving a little bit fast because I'm very, very excited here, but I don't have a lot of time in this nursery because I do have an appointment with someone. This is the Pneumolaria variegata. There's quite a lot of them here. There's rows and rows of them here. Look at that. And they're grown in this, uh, they look like terracotta pot, but I'm pretty sure this is plastic. It's like a pseudo terracotta pot. Really nice, they look really beautiful hanging. This is also slow grower for me. I think Thailand maybe, oh sorry, this is the non-variegated version. I have a feeling that Thailand had a head start with this This is and also a fondness, a kind of love for them, which is why they are grown so much here. But in Indonesia, they're very hard to find. In many parts of the world, they are very hard to find. This is the Ovada, which is trying to put out flowers. This is the most common. I, this is also a gateway Dishkidia. I recommend this for beginners if you're new. And they just look so good in these coconuts. They really do. First of all, the growing medium is sustainable. This is basically just half a coconut husk. Um, now are just stuck cuttings in there, I'm pretty sure. Can let them run. They really love to be in that apophytic type conditions. Uh, here in my home, I actually use the aeroid potting mix with a lot of cocoa chips in it. Look at the growth, the growth point here. This is the um, Ayanta variegata, and they are so chubby and fat here. I'm assuming that they're probably very well fed with nutrients because the ones that we see back home are a lot skinnier than this. A lot smaller leaves, I mean, than this. Look at this little one here. It's 25 baht only, you guys. That's so cheap. Oh my goodness. Yeah, everything here is 25 baht. Oh my god. This is why it's so easy to just buy them and just display them. And if something happens to them, you can just get a new one, right? This is okay. There's so many ways to display this, by the way. I hope in this trip, I'll be able to cover some of the pots. Because last time I was in Bangkok three years ago, I managed to find a lot of really interesting ways to display plants. I'm constantly amazed by their creativity and their determination to live with plants here in Thailand. Look at this little guy here. I put out a heart. <laughs> and let's look at that. Oh my gosh. And this right here, I don't know what species or hybrid this is. But look at the curly curly little tentacles that is put out. This is a funky, funky, beautiful air plant. It's a Talansia. This is really, really pretty. It says T, uh, Talansia Curly Slim, but I don't think this is a hang on. Oh, they do have tags, hang on. Yeah, this is, this is a hybrid. A lot of Talansias are actually hybrids because they flower so profusely, I guess. But it does take them a while to flower. Yeah, this one doesn't have a tag. But there's so many different ones here, my goodness. And look at this tiny little, I think this is an orchid. <laughs> this is a silver rose. Oh my gosh, and look at these little baby Dishkidias, Dragon Jades. The fact that they don't have a Latin name is suggesting that they are probably hybridized. I really love these terracotta pots. Aren't they a darling to have? All right, are you ready to be blown away? So I'm surrounded by Talansia usnoides. And then back here, 
<laughs> These are all the Shidias. Look at that, the Shidias everywhere. They are actually my favorite genus. I don't know if I made it abundantly clear in this channel. It is also my dream to have a Dishkidia uh, nursery in Indonesia only because no one's done it yet, no one's have it. But the only problem is that I actually love so many, I'm gonna look at that, just rows and rows of them. Because I have so many genuses of plants to care for and Dishkidias actually do well when I pay attention to them but the minute I let them go and focus on something else, they die. So they're a, a genus that really require, this is so cute. I guess this will grow into this. Yeah, if you see the left and the right. So anyways, I digress. The Shkidias, they do require quite a bit of care or maybe they're just not suitable with my uh, overwatering habits. So they don't survive. But yeah, I'm just so happy here. I'm, I'm literally walking along this row of plants, of air plants and Dishkidias. This is a very, um, what do you call this? Because my mom and my mom and my sister is here with me in the nursery, but they're way behind. So this is actually the first time in a while that, that I've had time to myself. And as I'm walking away from the music, things are getting more and more quiet and you can probably hear me more. But I'm feeling a sense of joy, a sense of peace and gratitude. And I know that this episode will probably air in June or July. But right now, there's a lot of chaos going on in this world, a lot of pain, particularly in Ukraine. I hope that you guys are doing fine and we would be out of the woods by the time this episode airs. And I hope that you guys are, are doing well. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the uh, journey ahead here in Thailand. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot of interesting nursery tours, tissue culture, uh, plant markets and things like that. Sorry, I figured I should have flipped the camera a while back so you could kind of see me, even though I don't like to show my face. Um, yeah, so this is just how nice, look at that, just rows and rows and rows behind me. This is an experience I will never ever forget. Thank you, like, I, I know I haven't met the nursery owners. I don't know who owns this place, but this place started out with a dream with someone who loved these plants, who wanted to build a cafe to give people, to bring people closer to plants and of course make a little bit of money along the way. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm just, this is becoming a very nice day for me. So look at all these coconut husks and these beds of Dishkidias just growing out of them. I think they are propagating. If you can see each of these nodes are going to be attached to the coconut husk here. And this replicates that epiphytic behavior, that's like a tree bark that they actually love. Look at that, that's just so interesting. They look so comfortable here. I would love to be them just sunbathing on a bed of coconut husk. And what's really adorable are their growth points here with the Dishkidias. They're actually a distant relative to Hoyas, I know I mentioned that earlier. So they grow in a, in a similar fashion and they do bloom. They have these teeny tiny flowers. So in, over here, they're very, very common. They're a lot more common than Hoyas. And I'm going to guess that they're grown very easily here. For some reason, they've got it right. And in Indonesia, I hope that we do catch up. And if someone here is watching my channel, someone from Thailand, uh, and you're interesting, interested in partnering up to do a Dishkidia nursery or to uh, to import it to Indonesia, let me know. <laughs> I am very, very interested. I would love to see these in people's hands. I would love to see these in people's homes. Look at that right there, how wild. They have this really, really cool jungle vibe to them. And I think uh, what really drew me to them is also the fact that they grow uh, really well in coconut husk. And there are actually many, many contraptions that you can grow them in. I actually have a cage back home that I bought from Thailand. So you, it's a metal cage, imagine, and you can put just the coconut husk with the Dishkidia in it and that metal cage. How wild is that? I hope I can find that store again and maybe take a quick vlog of that store. There are so many creative ways you can grow Dishkidias. They're not grown conventionally in pots, although you can, you totally can. But I just love these kinds of hacks. 
And I chance upon these little pot store. I guess these are for the Tillandsias. I guess you could uh, see something hiding back there. Hello. <laughs> I guess you can put them this way or you could hang them in a way. Yeah, there's, there's holes that you can actually hang, hang things down from them that I've seen. <laughs> and these are the guys with the heart shaped. How cute is that? My goodness. So I guess this is their pottery section where they actually pot up things. <laughs> there's another plant throne here where you can sit and hang out and take photos of yourself. I would love to have just corners of these where I can vlog out of <laughs> like plant arena. I'm going to end this episode with these beautiful heliconias. They resemble tropical birds, birds of paradise. Even like their little tongue here, my goodness. Uh, they are, I think, grown in bright shade. I'm still confused as how to grow them because I've seen them in so many different environments. Some of them may like to be in more of a full sun situation. Uh, and there's so many varieties of them. And this is a really cute one. They really, really have a suede like finish. Oh my gosh, I love them. But I'm gonna meet up with Jan and hopefully we can get into the other nursery. I haven't seen the entrance for it. Unless maybe this is the nursery that was uh, in question. Because sometimes Google Maps is a little bit off. So I'm gonna leave you at that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!